All right, well, let's go over these answers. <clears throat> For the, the first one, I, I, again, for those of you who didn't read in the chat, this was uh, actually I was inspired by one of this week's front page stories. Should we shake hands or not? And it's just such a rich article and leads to so many opportunities for discussion and class participation. Uh, anyway, it gave me this idea and I decided to create this quick quiz, Greetings Around the World. So in the Philippines, elders are greeted by taking your right hand and placing it under their armpit. Uh, the answer to that, uh, and uh, we got a mixed bag here. 61% said, yes, that sounds crazy, but possibly true. You were incorrect. Actually, uh, elders are often greeted in the Philippines by younger folks by taking one of the elders' hands and gently pressing their knuckles to your forehead. And this is a, a show of respect. The second question, in Oman, men often greet each other by wiggling their ears. There, men with big ears are held in high esteem as they're thought to be both wise and hospitable. Uh, the majority of you got that one correct. It is false. They press their noses together, which is just as weird, in my opinion. Uh, number three, in New Zealand, the traditional Maori greeting involves pressing noses and foreheads together while looking into each other's eyes, because that's not at all creepy. Um, yes, it, it is true. 78% of you were correct. That's true. Number four, in Russia, guests are greeted with two shots of vodka, one for good health and one for prosperity. Uh, Let's see. Well, an overwhelming 74 percent uh, thought that sounds like Russians to me, but uh, that's exactly why I, I, I wrote it that way. It is false. It's actually bread and salt. Bread is the most respected food in Russia, so uh, respectful to, uh, to greet um, respectful to, to greet guests with uh, bread, and salt symbolizes long friendship. In Tibet, people stick out their tongues in greeting. That is true, believe it or not. Um, Tibetan monks started that somewhere around the ninth century. They would stick out their tongue to show that it wasn't black and that they weren't some reincarnation of an evil king. Uh, in the Marshall Islands, um, people acknowledge each other by raising their eyebrows. Yes, it is true. Seven, in Zimbabwe, it's common for people to sing or shout a greeting that typically takes several minutes. That's false. Uh, they actually shake hands and then clap their hands twice. Uh, and lastly, in the U.S., it is not uncommon for teenagers to offer no greeting at all to their parents. And if they do respond to a parent's greeting, it is often with either a grunt or the cryptic multiple meaning response, whatever. <laughs> and of course, that is, that is very true. So thanks for, for participating. I, <laughs> I hope that was fun for you. I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're going to launch into today's session. Uh, let me see. <clears throat> Dan, are you there? I am. I am here okay. sharing, and now you can. All right. Thank you. Thank you. That's what I was looking for. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn off my video camera, and I'm going to share my screen here. And let's get started. We are recording today's sec session for those of you who are hoping that we will. We are. All right. And so here we go. Hi, everyone. I'm glad you're joining me for lunch today. 
Uh, we're going to explore features of news for you in the next oh, 26 minutes, uh, both print and online, and how they provide numerous activities for you to use with your students in a physical and or virtual classroom. One thing that's uh, really neat about the news for you is that print subscribers have free online access to the two front page articles every week. And that means that even though you may not have an online subscription, you'll be able to try out the online activities I share today and use the features we explore to provide additional instruction and practice every week. Now, the URL and password are in the upper right corner of the paper for you paper subscribers. And users can access news for you online on laptop, tablet, or smartphone. So lots of ways uh, for, for us, you to participate and for your students to view and participate. So in fact, why don't we jump into News For You Online right now? I'm here, it is newsforyouonline.com. You can also access it from our website, newreaderspress.com. For folks who have never been here before today, you can see that the online version has the same stories and photos as the print version, just in a little bit different a format, but they're all here for the viewing and lots more. And we're gonna look at those things this afternoon. Now, before I sign in here at the top in this box, uh, let me point out that there are a few features for instructors in the orange bar here near the top for which no sign in is required. They are the tips for teachers, and to a limited extent, the archive. So we're gonna start with tips for teachers since it's uh, actually in the title of today's webinar. And I'll start by pointing out the features here. So uh, first here over on the right at the top are the teacher's guides for the last four issues. The teacher's guide provides a full lesson plan for one of the two front page stories and an activity and discussion question for each of the other six weekly articles. There's a student friendly version provided so teachers can give the exercises and activities to their students without showing the answers or, you know, or uh, the reading levels because students know they don't need to see that. And we'll, we'll actually dive in and look at this week's teacher's guide in, in just a bit. Now, right under the guides, there is a user's guide for teachers. Uh, it's actually a nine page guide for users that walks teachers through the features of the online version of news for you. And just below it, uh, a table showing some CCR, ELA and CAVE standards. Uh, for those of you, most of you may know, News For You articles are targeted to reading levels three to six. What you can do is you can reference this list to see which skills can be strengthened using News For You. And why don't I just quickly open this up and uh, I'll blow it up here so it's easier to see. But here you have it. Uh, college and career readiness standards. Here you have for reading, for foundational skills, informational text, Speaking and listening, the anchor standards that are applicable uh, in News For You stories, language anchor standards, scrolling down, writing anchor standards. And then even more, we have ELA and Table 11 and 12 standards at the literacy level, all right, uh, for reading informational text. We have key ideas and details craft and structure, integration of knowledge and ideas, vocabulary acquisition and use. And from time to time, News For You also integrates other non-standard learning objectives. But this is a great go-to if you're looking for ideas, saying, you know what, I, I wanna use this as more just a, a supplemental reading uh, platform or, you know, or resource or tool. I, I really wanna hit those standards. What could I use this week uh, in the paper. And we're going to do just that, uh, but in a, a little bit different way. So let's go back to the tips for teachers. Here we go. 
The next thing I'll point out is, uh, as we scroll, continue to scroll down here on the right, is that there are three videos that can help. There's a seven minute tutorial, this one here showing the crossword, introducing news for you online features and how to use them. Below it, uh, there's a four and a half minute video outlining five activities you can use with your students to develop uh, fluency, vocabulary, comprehension, and writing skills. And still more, uh, a 60 minute recorded webinar for teachers and tu tutors uh, you know, who, who, who wanna drill deeper. Last but not least, let me scroll up to the top and call your attention over to the left side of the screen. There are over 70 activities you can access using these categories on the left here in blue. And you can see just how the depth and breadth of you got comprehension, expressing opinions, grammar, graphic organizers, inferring, maps, news literacy, note taking, and more. The list goes on and on. For today's short session, I'm going to focus on activities that develop each of the four basic language skills. So we'll look at a few things from listening here, uh, listening, reading, speaking, and writing. Okay. I'll use a few suggestions from the tips list to share with you, and I'll tie in other great features from both the print and online versions of News For You, like the teacher's guide and uh, archive that I mentioned earlier. So let's see what we can come up with for the first front page article. So I'm gonna click on home and go to that article. And here it is. <clears throat> All right, let's see here. It's about the environment and it's titled, Scientists Warn of a Code Red on Climate Change. So I can click anywhere on the photo and headline to open the, oops, you don't have access to them. I forgot to, uh, I have to sign in. So as I mentioned, we can use the free password. Again, if you subscribe to the print version of News For You, you'll find that weekly password in the upper right corner of the front page. And this week, the password is the word intense. So we'll type that in and sign in and voila. Now I can read and listen to the first two stories. And uh, more than that, uh, I have access to their online exercises and the crossword and word search for the week as well. All right, just from that free password that we're using. And you know, I'm trying to share activities today by language skill. I thought I'd start out by showing a few for, uh, for listening, then move on to reading, then writing, and, and, and end up with speaking. Uh, but this is the perfect opportunity to point out that each story has two online exercises in addition to what is in each week's teacher's guide. Some of them focus on phonics and counting syllables, um, other exercises on grammar and spelling, still others on reading comprehension. In fact, I'll, this is where you find it. So when you go to an article, then you'll find to the right here, it says article exercises, and you can click on that. And here, exercise one of 10, 10 exercises, it goes five and five. The first five in this one are multiple choice. So what is one country that has had wildfires this summer? And they would answer. Now, uh, this is great because you're working on, uh, you know, uh, quite possibly rereading the story and, and, you know, close reading to cite evidence. But you know what? That's a lot to remember. So you can return to the article and it will open in a new tab. So that's a great way to do it. And now it'll take us back to the article and we can just toggle back and forth between the two reread the article for the information that we're looking for, and then go back to the, uh, the exercise to answer the question. Oh, that's not correct. Please try again and, and keep doing it that way. So just wanted to point that out. And then, as I mentioned, the interactive crossword. And that's great. We'll scroll down here to the crossword puzzle. The interactive crossword is great as it includes things like vocabulary building. Uh, what else do you get? Well, spelling, of course, you know, geography, 
uh, abbreviations, idioms, so much in here. So a large body of water, right? Thoughts, synonyms, right? Abbreviations. And very easy for learners, even if they need to check their answer to see if it's right, no erasing, get hints, right? So that's a great feature too, the crossword. And beneath it, the word search. Uh, and the word search uses the vocabulary words from all of the stories in that weekly issue. And it can help students with things like uh, sight word recognition, identifying words by looking for uh, word parts and families, right? So uh, the word search is, uh, is a, a great go-to as well. That may not be something that you want to do in synchronous instruction, but you could assign as homework, right? And have them do it independently. Okay, so moving, moving on, let's go back up to the top here. So what I did was I read the article, because there's a, a powerful photo here, an engaging headline. There's some good adjectives for vocabulary work in it. Lots of places mentioned, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, use the, the places here you'll see in a, in a moment. It's science related, just wow, capital W. Uh, and, and then what I did was I clicked on the tips for teachers. So I read the article and thought, okay, what can I find here that'll be interesting? So click on tips for teachers and I scrolled down and clicked on listening to find an appropriate listening activity. So click and here's what I found. And the one that jumped out at me is right up on the top and, and it works perfectly for this story. Uh, listen and take notes. Okay, now let me point out that I would, I would never just launch into this or any article or passage without first setting the stage. Um, a warm up using that photo would be great, uh, and, and a caption possibly to spark interest and discussion, right? Um, introducing key vocabulary words, getting students to share what they already know about the topic, maybe uh, using the story and and a headline to make predictions. Uh, these are all things that we as teachers should be, and, and, I'm, and I'm sure you are, uh, doing. So, all right, let's, let's look at the activity. Uh, have students take notes as they listen to you, read a news for you article, here are some ways to approach it. Pose questions before you read and ask students to write answers as they listen. Uh, list questions to listen for on the board and tell students to write the answers as you read. Okay, you might ask uh, you know, you know, uh, questions like, according to this article, where did the report on climate change come from? Um, what is causing the Earth's climate change? What does the report say nations must do? Uh, when are world leaders scheduled to meet to decide what to do next? And of course, the students go back, and if not from memory, and probably not, they go back, they reread, they're you know, practicing close reading, and they're citing evidence from you know, informational texts. So great activity there. Uh, let's see, moving down, put questions on the board after the students have finished listening and request answers would be another way of doing that. Give cate oh, I like this one. Give categories of information for students to listen for. You know, always a great idea to, to, to establish a purpose for listening and of course a purpose for reading, uh, but in this case for listening. So a location, a conflict, and ask them to tell what they learned about those things from the story. Uh, you could use locations definitely from this story as there are 10 places named in the article. You could use, uh, have them listen for consequences of climate change. For example, the ice will melt, oceans will rise, hurricanes, uh, uh, drought, flooding, wildfires, bad breath. I counted six, seven, eight acceptable responses. Uh, <laughs> bad, bad breath actually wasn't one of them. Anyway, um, and you know, doing this article, you could have the students listen to the story using the News For You online audio feature, you know, or you could read it to them or, or both uh, to change things up. And that News For You uh, online audio feature is neat because 
uh, starting with the first story and then, you know, and then the second, third, fourth, it goes back and forth, switching between a, a female and male reader. Uh, so they're getting authentic voices uh, and, uh, and, it, and it goes back and forth. So they get different pitches and such. Um, and, and that's great for independent uh, listening as well. Uh, you know, or, or you could read it to them. Uh, you know, different ways to do this activity. So now options for sharing answers in a virtual, a virtual setting. So, you know, easy to think about how you would do this if you had them in, in a classroom, but how about a virtual classroom? Okay, you could have them provide answers uh, using the chat box, uh, maybe the hand raising feature and then sharing orally. You know, taking turns and calling on someone who raised her or his hand, or even using a free app or platform. Now, uh, some of you out there might know uh, far more of these uh, than, than, than I do. There are a number of them out there. One of them that I like is a digital interactive whiteboard that lets you use different colored pens, um, sticky notes, and you can color the sticky notes different colors, text boxes. Um, images and photos from your uh, computer, uh, you know, or you could Google, use Google images and photos. Um, it's called Jamboard. It was actually created by Google. It's a free, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a free resource and you can use it with laptops, tablets, and smartphones. We don't have time to look at it today. That's a that's a lunch and learn uh, all by itself, but there are lots of tutorials online. So check it out, Jamboard, J-A-M like jelly, but not, and board, uh, and uh, you'll get some great ideas from it. Okay, so next let's move on to a few reading activities. Scroll down to reading and click. And here, wow, tons of reading, it comes as no should come as no surprise. Uh, there, there are quite a few to choose from here. And I thought once again, I'll just use the one at the top. And once again, perfect. Uh, this, the map scavenger hunt is a great choice since there are six countries, two regions and one city mentioned in this article. Now, sometimes tweaking is required to make an activity fit, you know, depending on uh, the, the story that you're using, the activity, are you doing it online, in person, uh, student or class level? So here we go. Use news for you as the basis for an international scavenger hunt is how we're going to use it. Give students a copy of a world map showing countries and capitals. And I think preferably black and white for, for, this, uh, for this activity. Uh, by the way, I googled free printable world map with countries and capitals and came up with just under a gazillion results. So there's lots out there that's free uh, on, on the internet. And then what you would do is individually, uh, in pairs or small groups, ask them to skim the article and look for place names. When they find a, a region, a country, a city name, uh, ask them to find and color its location on the relevant map. Right now, you may choose to do this if you're, you know, if you're in class, person, you know, in person. You could still you could do this on a on an interactive whiteboard. Uh, you may have a map on the wall, or you may distribute them, you know, each of them uh, their own smaller map and have them do it that way. Then ask each student to write a sentence or two explaining why each place is mentioned in the story and have the students attach their summaries to their maps. But that's just a, you know, another fun reading activity that could lead into you know, speaking and, and writing as well. Now, you can also find a reading activity in this week's teacher's guide. So let's go back to tips for teachers, click and go to the teacher's guide. Here's August 25th. And uh, we'll use the student version that doesn't include the answer. So I'm gonna open it up and we'll scroll down to, here it is, scientists warn of a code red on climate change. 
Now, this true or false exercise will develop close reading skills uh, and require students to reread the story in order to answer the questions. So they're citing evidence, they're you know, practicing close reading, rereading, right? There were wildfires this month in the Russian region of Siberia, is that true or false? And what they would do is uh, when they come across a false statement, they would have to rewrite the statement to make it true. Okay, so you can go to the teacher's guide to find uh, great reading activities as well. And how about how about one more? Uh, ah, 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 I know. Okay. For, for this activity, students will use the archive. So we'll click here up in the orange on archive. And uh, every article from the past year is listed here by issue. There's last week's August 18th, 11th, 4th, for a full year. That's, um, where's my calculator? That's 336 stories over 48 weekly issues, right? So for a fun activity, you might have students skim these issues and their headlines to see how many climate or weather related headlines they can find, right? You might, based, based on the, the students or the class level, you might wanna time it, right? I did this and I came up with nine headlines. I, I did it quickly. Uh, and there were a few that required careful reading. I almost tricked myself. So as I, as I scrolled down and I won't do all this because that's just time consuming, uh, but just quickly, I'm scrolling, scrolling. Oh, extreme heat threatens the health of U.S. workers. Oh, how to stay safe and spot danger in extreme summer heat. And I scroll down and I go on and on and on. I remember there was one back in April. Just want to find, oh, there it is. Here it is. Rush of migrant children floods U.S. border. That was a tricky one. I read it quickly and thought, oh, there's one on flooding. Yeah, children's floods don't count as weather. So anyway, that could be fun too. And then going back up to the top to the search, you could even use the search feature to teach students how to use effective keywords or phrases for researching things online, right? Uh, so, you know, using this article as a guide, uh, have students try using different words to see which ones yield uh, the most results. So this was on, um, what was it about? Uh, flooding, climate change, weather. So you might type in weather and hit search, and there are 179 results for weather, right? And compare that to maybe climate change. Uh, and compare to see what's the most effective keyword or phrase to use. So great ideas, all kinds of different ways to use the features uh, in News For You and News For You Online uh, you know, to support class work. All right, so uh, ready for some writing ideas? Let's go back to tips for teachers. Scroll down to find writing. Here we go, click on writing. And you know, for writing, many of these require little to no explanation. Writing and answering questions about the stories. Gosh, Greg, what does that mean? Uh, you know, writing an opinion, a short summary, right? Uh, writing headlines, writing comprehension questions. Uh, but here's an interesting activity that could be done before students are introduced to a new story. That's right above the comprehension questions. Write stories about photos. So I'm going to click on the plus here and open that up. Now, if you're physically in the classroom together, prepare enough copies of a photo from News For You to give one to each of your students, okay? If you're teaching them virtually, maybe you cut and paste and have to crop the photo as needed and show it to them before you go to News For You online, right? Maybe you Google search and find that, uh, that photo uh, and you and you're using that with the uh, the Jamboard that I told that I told you about, uh, as you can do that as well. And then uh, let's see what does it say next. 
Before the students read the story from which the photo came, ask them to write stories to fit the photo. Imagination is welcome. When they're done, they can read their stories to each other. Uh, and then they can read the original story that went to the photo. And it could be interesting to see the different interpretations. Yeah, it could. You know, this activity can be adjusted according to the students' uh, abilities. For example, maybe with a lower level class or learners, you could have them write a sentence instead of a story from the photo, right? I mean, the wildfire photo from the front page this week could definitely inspire some wild stories, in my opinion. And uh, one more, a favorite of mine, you know, actually, as I think of it, one of my favorites is found in comprehension and not even underwriting. When you get to know, these activities, you just, you pick out favorites. Uh, where is it, where is it, where is it? There it is, stump the teacher. We'll open this up and take a quick look. So after reading and discussing an article, play stump the teacher. Students need to write at least two questions about the article and they should know the answers to their questions. And yes, writing questions can be difficult, especially for English language learners. So the teacher has to answer the questions from memory, no looking at the article. And the students love this when they stump the teacher because truth, it's fun to stump the teacher. Now, uh, I should also point out that writing can also happen at the bottom of an online story. This is really cool. I'm gonna scroll up to the top here, click on home to get to the article, click on it. We're going to scroll down through the story. Oh, good. There are some comments. Leave a comment. Okay. Here, the readers are invited to leave a comment. Uh, there are some students or readers who will react to the article. Some express their opinion. Some even... Uh, there, there are some teachers who really know how to use this. And they'll ask their students to post a brief summary in the comments. Um, some teachers use this to have their students correct spelling and grammar errors that they find in the comments left by other readers. So let's scroll up and take a look at a couple just quickly. Uh, Monica says, OMG, that poor women, right? So we can do some corrections there. She look old, where is her family? So writing just her response to the, uh, to the photo. JM. Now too much greenhouse gas, uh, now too much greenhouse gases into the air create problem. Nation's solar power is good, right? So identifying the problem in the story and offering a solution, uh, all kinds of different things that happen here. But you see, very devastating situation. So for vocabulary building. Uh, so posting in the comments is another cool thing that you can do. Lastly, and I know that I'm, we're out of time here, so hang in there with me a few more minutes if you can, uh, speaking activities. The first place I look for speaking activities is in the teacher's guide. So we'll go to Tips for Teachers and open up the guide. And scrolling down to our Code Red story, right underneath the exercise discussion questions. Has the weather changed recently where you live? If yes, how? What bad weather happens in your area? Do you think world leaders will make changes? Why or why not, right? So under each um, activity in the teacher's guide, there's a discussion question. You may use, use uh, some, all or none of it. Uh, and just above it, the other front page story that I alluded to earlier um, about shaking hands is great too. And look at what they did here. Should we shake hands or not? And they built a whole lesson plan around Speaking and listening, Anchor Standard 1, speak with classmates about greetings, all kinds of discussion questions and opportunities to talk about, and a full lesson plan provided. So just really rich uh, in the teacher's guide for speaking opportunities. Uh, and the, the, the last thing to remember is speaking op uh, you know, activities can also include fluency and uh, pronunciation work. 
right? Uh, depending on the level, you could have them uh, practice echo reading. You read a sentence to the students and have them read it back to you, mimicking your, your pronunciation, rhythm. Uh, paired reading, where you have them pair up and uh, alternate reading sentences aloud. If it's virtual, you could do that in breakout rooms, right? Choral reading, where you all read together. Uh, so lots of different ways to, to, uh, to, to, to use this for speaking practice too. There are so many effective and engaging ways to use news for you to improve your students' language skills. And we've only scratched the surface today. Uh, I know this was fast paced and I'm sorry we're out of time. I hope you enjoyed today's session and we'll take away at least a couple new ideas to try, whether in the live or virtual classroom. If you have questions, maybe feedback on today's topic and content, uh, my corny puns, comments, suggestions, we'd love to hear them. Uh, Dan, if you can uh, share, I'll stop sharing now. And Dan, if you could share with folks, uh, where to find, and there it is, send your question. You yes, and thank you, Greg, and uh, thank you everyone for joining us today. We had quite a, a large list of attendees. So if you have comments or questions, you can reach out to us at nrp at proliteracy.org. Of course, there's our 800 number. I wanted to point out too where you can click on the website. Uh, Greg was just showing you newsforyouonline.com. You can click on Click here for a free trial and get a three free week trial for yourself. So thank you everyone for joining us today. Any questions we didn't get to will be answered. There will be a follow-up message that comes out in a couple of days. A recording of this webinar will be sent along with a certificate of participation. And any of the pertinent uh, questions that were presented in the Q&A or chat boxes will be answered and sent to you as well. Thank you. Thanks everyone for your time and attention today for using NRP resources like the News For You and News For You Online. First of all, thanks for all that you do for your students and communities. Stay well, stay healthy, keep on. Until next time, signing off. Have a great rest of the week.